Okay, open the meeting, Finance Committee meeting with the select board here on the 21st of February. And we will start with the agenda. The agenda wants us to vote the meeting minutes from February 7th. Has everyone had a chance to read those minutes? Are there any comments or changes anyone would like to see in regards to those minutes? If not, do I have a motion to accept? Make the motion we accept the minutes. I second. All those in favor? I think I'm we're going to have to do a roll call. Yes, Brian? Or? Anyone on? You don't have anybody remote. Okay. Um, uh, hi. 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 All right. Unanimous. It passes. We're good. All right. The next piece on the agenda is to discuss the fiscal year 2024 operating budgets. And we have some guests coming in, in this evening to uh, speak about their budget requests, specifically at 615, the Conservation Commission, at 630, Public Works, and at 645, the library will be in to discuss their budget. There are people coming in now on Zoom. Coming in on Zoom. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. That's choice. If I see brought something back from St. Martin's or uh, why the mask? Well, I have COVID. Oh, I need to try to sit down on my list. <laughs> Best to be safe. Um, are you expecting others? Uh, Cindy is supposed to be here. Okay, you guys. I gotta have. I gotta have to schedule these tight. Um, let's get forward. Well, we have three departments coming in this evening. Um, library was scheduled at six forty-five, but if your guys come in. Then you guys are wrong. Okay. You guys are on good. rather. Yep. Um, if the conservation commission comes in, well, what if nobody comes in? If no one comes in, then we are good. All right, Brian, do you have anything to discuss regarding the budgets um, as we wait for? I guess there's a couple. But just a couple things about the schools. Remember, okay. we have a meeting with the elementary school in Franklin Tech on Wednesday, March 1st. Um, and then the Frontier Budget Hearing is March 7th. Right? right. And the Finance Committee has agreed to attend that. Mm -hmm. I believe the public hearing is the 7th. And then they are not voting until the 8th, I believe. Um, so typically, they would have voted that night, I believe. Um, not that 24 hours is okay. helpful in terms of making changes, but mm -hmm. um, so Franklin Tech should be. So I'm going to back up for one second. Franklin Tech should be in on March 1st. I've asked them to focus on um, the budget as it pertains to Waitley. Um, Budget presentations can be lengthy, as we know in the past. Um, they give a very thorough overview of uh, their programs and mm -hmm. all the great stuff they're doing. Um, did, did you give them a time frame? I said 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Um, That's good. <clears throat> so, okay. we'll see. I didn't get a response. So, uh, we'll see how they can pair their okay. if, um In regards to the schools, we should have the budgets prior to the meeting. Requested uh, them today again. Things happen. And in the past, uh, most school budgets we received have been, you know, last minute at best. Um, but if you have questions regarding the schools that require some you know, type of in depth answer, or even just a general answer, just 
please note them. So let's try to get them into Brian so that he can forward them to the school committees and administration so that when they come in, they're prepared to answer those questions. Um, and nothing is off the table. Any question you have regarding those schools, as they are requesting taxpayer dollars, so sky's the limit on questions. So just how we, and that might expedite some of the discussion. Okay. You have any questions, any thoughts, any? All right. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Close as you can. Come on up. Get, just be careful around Bob. He's got a big trip coming up and he wants to make that plane. Yes, I know. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you. And um, let's get to the uh, library budget right now. So that may Anybody have a hold on a second? CRS four. Which Se one? Se section two, part four of that. And Cindy, we're yeah. taking you out of order early because because I'm here. Because you're here. You're not there. All right. Oh no, I think you come over early just in case someone went to leave or you guys were late for we scheduled it. This was great. Okay. Um we're going to discuss the library the request from the library. As it stands right now, the library is requesting $82,828 from the tax rolls. That's an increase of $4,507 from last year for an increase of 5.75%. Yes. Are we right? Yes. Terrific. Okay. Give us an overview of the increases and why. Okay. Stop. So our increases are in electricity because I'm sure everyone is aware as their light bills have come in that the rates have gone up. So this um, for FY24, we were requested $4,000 for our electricity budget. And for FY24, we're requesting $5,000 just to make sure we have enough to cover the utility expense, um, the rates at the library. Um, the biggest increase is in maintenance for $6,000. And the reason for that is because last year we had an unexpected um, maintenance repair that came out of our budget resulting in us going over the $3,560 that was a lap that was budgeted for. Um, and it is a 72, going on 73 year old building. So things come up that you mm -hmm. aren't expecting. And I just want to make sure we have enough. Um, then there is just a slight increase in our technology budget to help cover the cot we leased from Canon, a really nice printer, copier, scanner, um, and so that $5 increase is just to reflect covering the cost of our lease for them. And then two new items this year is we have, we now have the lift in the library, so we are responsible for the maintaining the annual inspections on those lifts, so we're requesting $1,000 um, to be added to the budget, that's a new item. Um, so to cover the cost of our lift inspection. And then somewhere along the way, the library was paying their own phone bill. And then I'm not sure how and when that stopped. It was before I became the director. Um, but we were asked to, as our own department, to take over paying for our phone bill, I guess. So that's an additional $540 that was not in our budget in previous years. Are there any questions regarding the increases that we just heard about? I think Joyce. 
Joyce? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm uh, curious, um, has the library's electricity rate actually gone up? Have you experienced a rate increase? Because you should be on municipal aggregation and your rate should not have changed. I mean, you say yeah. everybody's rate's gone up, but municipal aggregation has not gone up. So unless you're using more electricity, you shouldn't be paying more per kilowatt hour. Okay, I did notice that our bill jumped from, was about $450, but the last two months our bill did jump to about $600. So I don't know if that was just what caused that change in usage. I'll have to go back and- Probably the mini splits. How did that compare to the same time last year? It was an increase of about 25%. But you should, you should yeah. absolutely check that the library is on municipal aggregation because you should be paying nine cents a kilowatt hour for what everybody else is getting. And you shouldn't be paying anything more than that for the source. If there's some other reason why it's going up, then you should know what it is. But yours shouldn't be going up because of that. And if you're not on municipal aggregation, for crying out loud, we got to get you on. All right, I can look into that tomorrow when I get back to the library. Brian had a point. Oh, I was just wondering if, if the jump was with the colder weather, with the mini splits, most start likely. working harder. Most, most likely, yes. Yeah. Um, that would be it. So then the, the comparison might be last winter to this winter. Okay. See if there's a yeah. But yeah, definitely, like Joyce said, the, the library should be on the part of the municipal application. Okay. So when should I get back the rate should be lower. I hope it's on. I'm also looking at the 2022 expended. So it's an actual figure was 4577. So right. it is up from the 4,000. When did you in, put in the uh, havoc units? Those were put in 2017, uh, 2016, Bob? Yeah. 2016. Oh. Okay. Um, I, and this is not a question for next year's budget, but I know that we have a grant to. Um, <laughs> Install solar energy for some of the town buildings. Have we talked about that for the library? Did we get a lot of sun up there on that hill? I've not, I've never had a conversation. Mm -hmm. Someone else would pay for it and then they'd stop paying bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need to get an assistant town administrator to get a grant to help us get those panels on any building we can. I mean, I certainly can reduce the requested amount of electricity. I think you, you got to leave it in there. Yeah, but it's you should not. really know what it is. Like, you have to know, like, why is your, why is it that you're paying Did more? Did your usage go up or did the rate that you're paying go up? That's I believe it. the usage has gone up. Yeah, okay. Which would probably be the mini splits. Yeah, they're terrible for heat, great for air. air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're yeah. very expensive. Yeah. Okay, so we figured that the culprit is the mini splits okay. at this point. All right. um, if that's not the case, please uh, well, let us know. I will. And if you're not on the grid, uh, please get in touch with Joyce because she's the master of the grid. Okay. Okay, in this town. All right, sounds good. Who was paying the phone bill? That's a <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you have anything to share with us regarding utilization of the of the facility? I absolutely do. We had an excellent year for FY twenty two. We separated out eight thousand eight hundred and four library items. We have a total of 12,967 items in the library that's books, audiobooks, DVDs, magazines. And are through the in a library loan system, because we are part of the CW Mars resource sharing system, we loaned out 2,407 of our items to other libraries through the interlibrary loan. But we only in a library, our patrons only borrowed 1,648 items, which means we have the materials in the library that our patrons are looking for and they're coming in to get them. And we had a total of 2,694 patron visits to the library during the fiscal year 22 fiscal year. 
And of the 1,500 or so residents of Waitley, 603 of them are registered as library patrons. That's substantial. How does all that compare to the prior year? It's gone up. Okay. All of it's gone up. We're really rebounding nicely from the hit we took during 2020 and 2021. That's terrific. Yes. So that's a third of the population in the town is using the library. Plus, by using the library, if we could get a third of the population to vote, that would be, that would be terrific. Okay. Hey, um, are there questions for me? Um, are you all set with this part of the budget? Yes, I am. Okay. Are you prepared to discuss any capital? That is not me. Those were, the trustees were the ones doing the capital planning. So okay. Bob is here. Are you... Okay. Bob, are you ready to discuss the capital for the uh, One was submitted by Fred and one was submitted by Jim Ross, I think. Yeah. And... So we have the issue of it looks to be something going on with the um, the chimney, yeah, and is also something going on with the windows. Yeah, and we looked at those numbers and whatnot. So my first question about those requests: Could any of that come from CPA money? Well, we also have a a, a submission into CPA for a repair of the front step. Okay. So what we're trying to do is utilize every avenue to try to uh, begin to approach these uh, issues that the 73 year old building is beginning to offer. Right. right. We have to do something about the front steps. Mm -hmm. um, the Isbert Commission last night uh, approved our request to forward it to the CPC. Um, so that's on next month's agenda. And then um, when Keith does an inspection for us and cleans out the, our, our rather interestingly designed gutters on the rotunda section, he was the one that took photos of all the things that he thought ought to be addressed immediately. Right. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that that's kind of a flat roof and we had backups and things like that. Um, as far as the what we're looking to do with the windows is we're, we're looking to take off the old um, screens, we're looking to reglaze. And not replace. I would think that any of that would be CPA eligible. And then the the second uh, request was for electrical upgrades. In Cindy's office, there's one plug, which is all Ina Kane needed. Plug her lamp in above her typewriter. Right. But that's not the case nowadays. Um, we have issues with the fact that neither of the bathrooms have heat. We have to open the doors every night to make sure that. Nothing bad happens, so that's one of the last things Cindy does before she leaves. Yeah. Um, water has been an issue for the bathroom downstairs and for the kitchen. So those, all of those things ended up in a, a request spread. Uh, I believe he got two electric units to respond, um, and he worked the numbers off of those two um, estimates. Okay. So these are just things that, you know, as we move further into the 21st century, we were farther and farther away from the lovely little building that was designed for 1950. Sure. Um, and we need we need to upgrade things. We have computers to run. Um, Cindy certainly needs more. Um, we've got, I don't even want to just stay publicly, but we've got pigtails on pigtails. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good way to fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are, I mean, those, those are, we're, we're trying to take these steps a little bit at a time. Sure. To, and that we're, I mean, we're going to face more, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. The boiler is old. That's why we rely so much on the um, mini splits. Yeah. You know, and so we're just trying to pick off things as we go along so that we can handle in case something else happens. We're always worried about our septic system. Is that pretty old? Yeah. Uh, and that's not going to be a simple, simple task because it goes out to the field, the hill. Yeah. Well, in in the uh, if you had to prioritize, them, how would you? What what's the top three? Well, I would say that uh, um, we have to do something about the front steps before they deteriorate more. Um, our um, mason that we intend to work with 
uh, says that there is no no scent in destroying the front steps and replacing them because he says that you can't pour concrete like that concrete anymore. The 1950 concrete was far superior to what we could find today, which is why we intend to fix it, patch it, um, take out the spider crack, seal it. Um, we've done research in the, into the field and stuff like that. That's that is a that's a top priority because that's how people get in to the library. And of course, because our demographic tends toward um, elderly, we have to be really careful in the winter months with treating the steps. But we have to be careful with what we use to treat the steps because, as you know, the, the calcium chloride. Um, it just eats concrete away because we're really switched with the magnesium chloride already, and we're still exploring other possibilities of, of trying to keep the steps. Uh, and then, as far as the chimney goes, we better do something about that sure. uh, right away. And anywhere where there has been intrusion of water from the roof of the rotunda, which is why we want the windows repocked and glazed, uh, I think that's a priority because. Wherever you have water damage, you have to stop it. Um, and, and then uh, I really think that uh, electricity is the last one and fixing up the, at least the electrical parts of that proposal are really important. Getting more outlets in the children's room. How many of you have in the children's room, Cindy? One. One. And one in her office. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, that did not be. And I'm sorry to say that that is a third priority. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Bob, I almost apologize for what I'm about to say, given how much time we have spent together. <laughs> okay, Dr. Mason Reed. But given your description of the window work in particular, where you were really clear that you're not proposing to replace Correct. the 70 year old windows, but to restore them. It sounds completely CPA eligible to me. It's exactly what we're doing with the front steps. We're fixed, you know. And and my first inclination, the, the chimney work also sounds likely. I, I don't know it as much, but the windows for sure would be eligible. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what we did in town hall with the windows. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just... 70 years old instead of you know 150 years old. So I well, I can I can I'll, I'll check with Jim Ross because he, he he did that particular thing and if uh, he wants us to, to make an application to um, first the historic commission and then the CPC, but we're we're running out of time to because I <coughs> they're gonna be looking at March, but I suppose we could special time meeting in November or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe you should be doing uh, periodic general maintenance on the building more often to keep away from hitting all these projects at one time. Well, um, you're right, Dan. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And that's why uh, Keith comes twice a year to take a look at the, um, with the bucket truck to take a look around at the top and, uh, and see what's going on. Maybe Keith can add to you know, what he saw when he was up there. Yeah, there's certainly things that now that we have a bucket truck are easily seen and monitored that couldn't have and weren't being done in the past. So um, <clears throat> the fact that I'm going there, as Bob mentioned, I'm keeping on touch of things a lot more than it was in the past. Okay. Well, if you could exhaust CPA money. The monies in CPA that might be sitting there, um, that would be a great help. And we, on the other hand, um, the town could help the library out with the electricity, with the electrical issues, and maybe do that right the first time. Um, and um, that would be I think our recommendation at this point, you feel is everybody feeling comfortable about that? Yeah. And then rework the request within the capital uh, and you can move on. But uh, uh, would you suggest that I 
Well, we already have approved the request last night, so this would be a new request. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we're, we're pretty flexible, as you know. Yeah, but the That's deadline right. was in December, and it's yeah. you know it's a state program. I think we have to go to the June the second application date. Uh, we're you know we're a ways beyond the deadline. Um, so but as but as Paul, but as to do tomorrow. No, you don't have to do it tomorrow. Yeah. No. Um, but as Paul said, when we looked at things in June, the special town meeting is usually September, October. Does that sound last year? November this year. Yeah, it was November this year. That's right. And I don't I don't remember why. So right now, those requests for steps, chimney, and windows. They wouldn't have the money till no the steps are in the pipeline. The steps, the steps are on are the way. Absolutely. Steps are on their way. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the um we've got the windows in the chimney. And how soon do you think that process could get off the ground? Well, there are only two deadlines a year on the second one is June. So it would be you know, it takes a couple of months for to have a public hearing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Process so that's, you know, might get it might get it done by fall. You might get it done by fall, and I know that's the big concern, especially with the chimney and the soffits and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, with water coming in and there's only so much caulking Keith can put on a building. I mean, it makes me wonder whether the library needs a comprehensive look that some group of people are going to sit down and look at and parse out about it. What could we have done what similar, similar to that already? But some of it has happened. I thought so, but yeah. I mean, we had before we spent all the money a few years ago. We did a comprehensive study of <laughs> what the town wanted. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with the maintenance of the building. But. Well, so as far as the roof, the slate, and the copper, or they're yeah. good. Don't even think about them. They're good. They're, they're fabulous. So yeah. don't have to worry about them. That's good. And when was that last work done? 1960, 50, whatever. One was built. Wow. Yeah. 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 You know, a lot of times you play, you're looking at 100 years, anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's all. I think the only thing is we have to know how to treat the 8,250 request whether there's going to be an anticipation that CPC will approve that at a special town meeting because it's it's sitting here mm -hmm. on our budget and we just have to know how to treat it, whether it's going to be withdrawn by the library or how it should be handled. Um. Well, I think all we can do is make a recommendation. We only make right. recommendations. Right. We we recommend to the town whether a certain um, budget sh should be passed, how it should be voted on. So all we do is recommend. Right now, our recommendation would be to the library to pursue all CPA monies, resubmit the budget request to us with um rather the uh capital capital, capital request yeah. and then we'll move on from there and i would concentrate for our capital request to be in the area of electricity or the electrical ser service because that seems to be a very high need <clears throat> okay. are we good yeah I, th I just think we need an anticipation of knowing that we hear that uh, CPA funds will likely be usable for that. Therefore, we should work in anticipation of them being used for that. Yeah, I mean, we, we may have to do, obviously I'm speaking on behalf of only one member of the community, but the historic preservation standards that Bob has just learned are more specific than they are for some of the other areas of CPA funding. And uh, But as soon as I heard you say restore the windows, that may be. So we may have to have a little bit more detailed investigation of what the plan is, just as we did with the masonry. And we can do that informally with you. 
we don't have to wait to submit a proposal. <laughs> I would have one more question. Why is it that the CPA um, can approve the replacement windows in the church, I but the replacement windows for the library are not being pursued? Why is that? But they're not, the window is not, the church is not replacing its windows. It's having its original windows restored and reinstalled. Yeah. That that's, is why. That's the CPA. Yeah. Okay. So, you're, so you're saying that. And the church is paying for storm windows. So the, you're saying the library should pursue restoring the windows as a historical, like they are. Right, right, right. Okay. Is, isn't yeah. that what you're planning on doing? I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we. Why not fix it? Tremendously extensive. The so only difference is they're taken out the screens. Yeah, I, mean, I, I have to talk with Jim because he was on, on that. Okay. So, moving forward to Fred's point, um, you're going to speak with Jim Ross. Yep. Uh, get a better understanding of the. <laughs> around the windows, and then once you're sure of that, CPA Avenue for the windows, see if that can be pursued and, sure. um, and then after following that, um, you know, we'll move forward with the monies for the electrical. You got it. So are you okay with that? Sounds good to me. As long as you're okay, then I'm go good. In. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, anyone have any other questions regarding the library, capital, or operating budget? Um, numbers look good. I, I, you know, people are use, using it, and it's a jewel really in is. this town. Um, so I think people feel good about keeping it old. I love being here, so I don't tend to go away anytime soon. Well, we hope not. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. I'll be in touch, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bob, have fun. I just typed D, W, and the computer. That's <laughs> what we Thank you all. See ya. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So the Conservation Commission was uh, on for 6.15. They were late. So right. we'll, we will punish them. No, we won't. All right. We'll put them on. Let's go. So the Conservation Commission is on. Uh, yeah. Okay. We've got uh, GG16. In the first, where is it? GG sixteen. It's section one. It's in section one. We knock off past years. I can make this bigger. That's why I write it down lower left every time we look at it. All right. I hope I have the right one. Yeah. yeah. So um, we have our conservation commission here. We're going to take a look at the budget. Um, conservation commission is asking for thirteen thousand four hundred twenty-seven dollars um, next year. That is an increase of twelve thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars, or a percentage change of 2,585.40%. Congratulations, you win the percentage change in the five town over the past five years. <laughs> uh, and in addition, um, there, was an, there was an addendum here for 2024 where they were asking for $1,330 to $925 increase, which comes in at 228.40%. Your percentage increases are right off the board, but your dollar figures are very palatable. So go. Yes, well, thank you for having me today. Um, you know, the Conservation Commission has worked for a number of years with a minimal budget. 
And I get a lot of laughs when I do workshops for conservation commissions by saying that I have an annual budget of $500, whether I need it or not. Um, you know, most towns don't operate on, on, on that small of a budget, but we're not super busy, but the deal with the conservation commission is, is that it's a very complex role that we play because the laws are written, uh, well, the, the regulations are written by the state. And the state wetlands regulations are detailed and lengthy. Their processes are complex and their terminology hard to understand. And um, because of my work, I'm very familiar with the regulations. I'm very familiar with the process. I'm familiar with the people at DEP. And so we've sort of worked on that as a way of being able to sort of manage without professional staff persons to, to, to work with us. Um, but it's a lot of work and uh, we have a good commission. It's been a stable commission for a number of years. They keep voting me chair for life every couple of months because none of them want to ever be chair. And um, I think it's partly because of the workload, but partly because of the complexity of the regulations and the process. It's to the point where, you know, a couple of times people, uh, the town has provided a, a note taker to prepare minutes, but I spend more time editing the minutes than if I wrote them myself. So I do all the minutes myself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, all these DEP forms that have to be filled out whenever we make decisions. I fill out all the forms. I went to the post office today to send stuff out certified mail because it has to go out certified mail when then it goes out. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm sort of saying, you know, 18 years, maybe that's enough. But of course, if I had a little help, it'd be a little easier to stick around. So I think there's two arguments for getting some help for the Conservation Commission. One is you would retain your chair for a little longer. And two is if you're sick of me, you'll have better luck finding somebody else to do it. Um, and basically, I've, I've talked to all the other commissioners, and none of them want to be chair. So you'd have to find somebody to know about and count. Uh, this past year, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments did one of their regional um, assistance programs to, to sort of do a feasibility study of having shared conservation agents that could be shared by multiple towns in Franklin County, because many of us are too small to really support an agent, even a part-time agent on our own. And so they released that report about a month ago, and they suggested a couple of different mechanisms that could be pursued. There were eight, I think eight or nine towns that participated in the feasibility study from Franklin County. And, and from what I've heard, there's a lot of interest in a shared position. So west of the river, there's, uh, besides us, there's Conway, Ashfield, and Heath that are interested. So there's maybe a possibility of having one person that would cover all four towns to help take the minutes, get the agendas out on time, you know, to fill out the forms, to schedule site visits, to answer questions and things like that, and uh, just take some of the burden off of the commission, but most of that falls on the chair. Mm -hmm. um, we don't yet know what that would cost because uh, there's an opportunity for another year of that assistance program to actually look at how to implement a shared position. Um, and we don't know how many towns would share it. We don't know what the ultimate cost would be. So I, uh, I talked or emailed with Brian a little bit about it and said, all right, let's just throw in a placeholder for now uh, to say that, you know, if this were to come to fruition before the next fiscal year, at least we would have an opportunity to say, yes, we're in. Mm -hmm. So the $10,000 is just something I pulled out of my ear and, uh, and, and it's really so much a placeholder until we can get a better sense of whether this is feasible to do. Okay. okay. What would be the worst case if no other town shared in this? What would be the worst case scenario? Well, um, I, it would, the worst case would be that I'd be stuck with it for life and then I would sort of just shrivel up and say, um, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore eventually. But you know, the, the, the chair before me was Jim Ross. He was the chair for 21 years. I was I, this is my 18th year. You have relative stability there, and it, we have had, I think, remarkably good relations in town with farmers in town, with the highway department, with 
uh, you know, with, with most of the landowners in town. And that's what we want is continuity and, you know, something that functions well. Um, the other towns that responded to the survey, they had, I think, 14 people that responded from those eight towns. A whole bunch of people from Leverett filled out the survey for some reason. I think most of the other towns, it was the chair that filled it out, and half of those people had been on the board for less than two years. So there is, in other towns, a lot of turnover on the Conservation Commission, especially at the chair position. And so it's hard to have continuity, but it's also hard to have competent people that understand the regulations and the procedures. Um, the other thing that uh, an agent can get us is some expertise so that you're not relying on one person that has you know, a background in this, doing all of the, uh, you know, the wildlife assessments, the, uh, the wetland delineations, the uh, hydrology, looking at hydrology calculations and stormwater management plans, the erosion and sedimentation plans. Not all of that am I an expert in, but, you know, somebody has to sit there and stare at it long enough to come up with questions to ask during a public hearing. And so I think the, 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 the worst case scenario is just that you'll see a lot of turnover in the future, and then you know you won't you won't know what kind of situation you'll get in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you could put it into a couple of sentences, uh -huh. maybe even a paragraph, <laughs> so that the average person in this town, the average taxpayer, resident would know what the benefit of a conservation commission is to their to themselves and to the town as a whole sort of like you know a 15 second commercial for the conservation commission what would it be well, the Conservation Commission has multiple roles in most towns, but the primary one for small towns is just administering the Wetlands Protection Act. And so essentially, anybody that works in wetlands or floodplains or within a certain distance of those has to file with the Conservation Commission. And if the Conservation Commission does a poor job of it or doesn't handle it, then it goes to DEP. So the town residents would have to go to DEP to get you know, a sensible decision if they feel like the commission is not doing a good job. But primarily we're looking out for the water resources of Waitley, you know, to make sure that nothing happens to the, the, the things that we depend on. Mm -hmm. And also to work with uh, Franklin Land Trust, Kestrel Land Trust to try to do conservation projects that are beneficial to the town. And so, and if you have experience, and some, ex some of the benefits of, of me being the chair was that when the water, department needed to try to uh, deal with the well when the erosion of Mill River cut up against it. You're dealing with federally endangered species, state endangered species, Army Corps of Engineers, DEP. I knew the people to talk to. I was able to sort of pull together right. and get uh, an approach to try to solve that problem that would have been really, really difficult to, to get to otherwise. So, you know, if you have a conservation commission that's active and, and experienced, then they can help the town work through some of the permitting issues that would otherwise be problematic, not just under the Weapons Protection Act, but under the various other environmental regulations that might come into effect. Thank you. Uh, um, that helps us help you because there are people that watch this, believe me. Um, okay, do we have any questions? Regarding the Conservation Commission, and would, would this be a full-time position? If it, you know, I mean, if it's four towns, mm -hmm. would it be a full-time position? I would hope because we're more likely to get a good applicant that way. But if we can't come up with enough hours per month or enough dollars, we might have to go with part-time. When, when do you think you'll uh, make a decision as to whether this is all going to happen? I mean, this, this will go in as, yeah. like, like you said, as a placeholder, um, but what's your time frame on that? It's hard for me to know right now because, um, you know, 
the request for regional assistance, you know, each, I guess each board sort of said, this is what we nominate for projects. So we have to find out whether the first card is going to be available with the implementation. So once we find that out, then we know which fork in the road it is. You know, we work with first card to figure it out, or we go talk to other towns and we have a little meeting and we try to figure it out amongst ourselves. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, I don't really know. And okay. it's, it's hard to gauge, you know, which other towns would be, you know, willing partners in that. Yeah. We haven't gotten that far. Very good. So we understand. Tommy, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Really. I mean, I okay. think we got to vote to leave it to have it in there. Yeah. We may not use it, but we may use it. And and it's there. It's, it's there. Good. If that needs to change, then it needs to change. But yeah. I think, as you know, we don't vote right now. We wait till all budgets are in. Right. We discussed all the <laughs> how how they fit within the framework of the entire town, and then that's not done till the end of this process. But right now, have we, any additional questions? Just send me an email, or I'll come back in if you like. We know where to find you. Yeah. Nice thing about a small town, you just can't hide. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good explanation. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the one point that I do have is. So if it's in the budget, it's we're going to be generating new tax revenue. But if we if we if we pull it out and use existing existing dollars from free cash or something like that, we're necessarily get the you know we're going to generate additional taxes. So it's just one to consider mm -hmm. as we move forward with the budget. But this kind of items, right? It, it's it's one thing that sort of has a doesn't have to set fiscal year timeline as to when we might get the money. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just one to consider because if we use existing funds, then we put it in the county and we put to the side as it works its way through. If we appropriate ten thousand dollars this fiscal year, but for FY24 nothing happens, then if that money goes back into free cash, it's not like we can encumber and carry it for 25. And then for 25, are we are we generating an addition? You know, 10 are we just doing 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 each year? Or we could just put 10,000 what we have now in an account and then. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't know. I'd have to look into more detail what the timing is. Okay. Well, we know there's a mechanism for getting that done, and that's the important thing. Okay. So we have, we now have our public works and public works. That's uh, number five. Hey, Keith, how are you doing? I'm good. All right. So our public works department for 2024 is requesting $432,565. That's an annual increase of $2,800 for a Percentage change point six five percent. Two thousand um, less than Consequent. What's that? Two thousand less than Consequent. There you go. I need to make a change. Uh oh. Two thousand percent. Did I mess it up? Uh oh. You know, Amy gone for how long? And all of a sudden, um, we're getting hidden speed bumps. All right. Um, well, what's what is the change? I can. Um, you want to just speak to it as you roll through? Yeah. Do you have the Brian? Do they have the complete breakdown? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that first page is just okay. I mean, I can go through section by sections and where the increases are. Why don't you do that? That um, under. Highway general expenses, $100 additional to the uniform account. The catch basin cleaning is $1,000. Um, <clears throat> what is really changing there drastically through the last few years is the hourly rate. Um, it's a specialized piece of equipment, and we're now right in the range of $250 an hour. The rent 
the unit for a day with an operator. So it's a very expensive um, task, but at the same point in time, to clean basins, it's pretty much the, way the only way to do it. Yeah. Um, the next line item increase that shows is a black top hot mix asphalt. Um, only a $500 increase. Um, again, asphalt prices based on the trend in fuel prices have generated that increase. And then the catch basin material, that looks bad, a 50% increase, but if you look at my lap, um, 21 expenditure and 22 expenditure, <clears throat> it's it's pretty much a level fund of where I've been in the last two years. Um, same thing with basin materials. It's um, when we have to purchase replacement catch basins when they when the old ones fail, um, concrete products are getting more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. So those are the increases there, which that section generates a 3.18% increase in the general highways. Um, winter roads, I left that alone, even though um, salt prices have jumped ex exorbitant. Um, it's one of those things where even like this year, we're, we're sitting good. It's still at this point, and obviously, Record warmth in January um, is putting us in good shape there. Um, and as most of you may know, winter roads is one that can yeah, be over and deficit spend if we should need to. So sure. I feel what's presented is a is a is a fair number, and I don't need to worry at the moment there. Um, same thing with road machinery. Um, leaving that all alone. On to garage maintenance. The only thing is $100 more in electric. My electric bill is, you know, that is averaging up just a little bit. Are you on the grid? <laughs> Are we on the grid? Yes. If you're not, Joyce is on here and we can let her know. Well, we don't think that the library may not be on. But Pretty sure it is. You, you think it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We're, we're plugged into the street. All right. <laughs> I don't think that's what we're talking about. But go ahead. Um, heating oil, an additional $100. Same thing there. You know, it's, um, we that's primarily are certainly during all of the hours we're there. Um, we have a programmable thermostat that we operate and we burn wood during the hour we're there, which saves the town a you know, tremendous amount of heating oil because the building has mm -hmm. no insulation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it, okay. it's normally a very cold building. So. Is the bathroom heated? Only by the wood, but yeah, the wood, wood furnace. The wood furnace is right outside the door, is it? Well, we're just from the building, right? Yeah. <laughs> right here, yep. Yeah. Used to learn in the library for heating the library. <laughs> on the section of the tree department, that's the same thing on the level form there. And that gives a combined total of a 0.65% change. So that is a good number to work with at this point. Okay. Um, where's the mistakes? And as far as the computer knows, there are none. That's, that's accurate. I was only asking if I could make it a thousand and sixty five percent. Oh, it's instead of two thousand. <laughs> Questions concerning the highway? Oh, very good. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Yeah. Fred, yeah. you Fine. good? Yeah, I'm good. Um, do you have any capital stuff that you're going to be yes. running by us? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about those now? Um, the, the items on that um, 2008 
F five fifty. It was stable last year. You know, I don't I don't know at this point in time what for capital planning. Many I haven't gone in front of them. I don't know if they I don't think they yeah. 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 Okay. They don't want to talk to you for okay. some reason. <laughs> and the only I believe the only other thing at the moment was the um the F one fifty, which based on our Green communities, I mean that we you know the the group of the fact that we belong to green communities, that vehicle would be required to be replaced with electric. Will be replaced with a hybrid. I don't know the requirement. I thought it would have to be an electric if it's available. If that's I'm not sure. That's Something that I'd have to refer to Brian or someone else on that knows more about green communities. Have you gone onto a waiting list for that yet? No. And they're just put, they just put a big stop on the or did it because there's something that's not quite right with the battery system. They, you're right, you're right at the moment, uh, between Ford and General Motors is. They're coming out with theirs, and I've heard Dodge is coming out with theirs. So um, yeah, that's really in, in, a, in a matter of short period of time, yeah, they'll yeah. probably. But at the same point in time, the overwhelming demand for them is yeah. outrageous to yeah. the point where you can't get them. So and yeah, that's why I asked about them. I don't yeah, know yeah. How, how we go about. You know, when you ask that we put a. a you know, at one point in time, when Ford first did it, they came out where you put a hundred dollar deposit on it. Well, there are people that have done that here, right here and locally that still haven't gotten, still haven't gotten there. So, so right. um, I don't know what to tell you. It may be a scenario where we decide to make the decision to do it, but then it still takes two more years to get one on. I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. Can you run the 2013? Yeah, it's still the the, the body work is, is definitely the worst case situation. Um, underneath is like the rocker panels are, are getting really bad. You know, we do as much as we can as far as washing, fluid filming. We've already done, you know, a fair amount of body work to it. Um, but my other comment would be that for an electric one, fifty thousand isn't enough. It's you know again that number was um, was the initial yeah numbers. Um, I think that it's more like sixty or sixty five now okay. for an F one fifty. Um, uh, yours is two wheel yeah. drive. It only needs plain old. Need, it doesn't need yeah, so it, it, I, You may be my closer. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need. No, mine is four wheel drive, but oh, it's okay. still only a half ton. It's yeah. yeah. What about the Green Views Act? Do you follow by any of that? The what? The, where you said the uh, it might be uh, part of the requirements of the Green Community Act should be good. That's what I'm saying. The, the reason I have to purchase an electric is the fact that Waitley receives money yeah. for green communities. And any place that we can purchase hybrid or electric, if they have electric, they we have to comply to that. That's part of the program of us getting money from the state. Right. Can you, do you have more? I'll, I'll double check. So when we purchase non heavy duty vehicles, we have to be from um, fuel efficiency standards. And so they keep they keep ratcheting it they up. They keep becoming more efficient, more efficient in terms of what we can purchase. I'll have to double check where they are now. I don't remember that off the top of my head, but yeah, something in the back of my head is saying it, it was it was getting what was the grant strict, more strict. What was the grant that the town received? Well it's a green communities program. It's a program. Um okay. So what's the state doing for us? In regards to the program, um, we can apply for um, energy energy efficiency. Um, so, in regards to this truck, boilers, it's an eligibility criteria for us to be eligible. So, so the initial grant was before I got here. There was 
maybe 250,000 for energy efficiency improvements at the elementary school. Um, right now we have one for 95,000 for additional weatherization improvements at the elementary school. Um, we got about one fifty for the town hall. Oh, the other one was the town hall. We got about fifty thousand from the town hall. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So overall, it's a program that's well funded. Um, yep. And I believe it's funded through regional greenhouse gas emission auctions. It's not. It's not necessarily a program that's. I mean, we all pay for the program somehow, but of course, um, it's not. I don't think it's tax payer funded in that sense. So it's ratepayer funded in that sense. So I mentioned to Brian because I happen to be looking at the list of grants, green communities grants for another reason uh, today. And a number of towns, it appears that they have used their green communities money to buy electric vehicles. So take really are, if you were if you think the current one is going to be spent down this calendar year. That would be nice. You should only have one grand as you should You know, really ought to look into mm -hmm. that. I mean, there's a waiting list of, well, there's a waiting list of project ideas. But there's a, you can't turn it right around. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember. Yeah, we can turn it down. The vehicles aren't available at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Time yeah. to it's, work. It's, it's just, I suppose in reality, that truck almost never leaves waiting. It right. goes from the garage to your house, house. Very well and done. so it doesn't get a lot of mileage on it. And if you can go three or four hundred miles on a charge, you're, you're you know you're yeah. forever. But can the grid handle it? Well, that's a choice. <laughs> choice. See, choice leaves. <laughs> I, bet I didn't gone. leave. I've been listening and That'd just waiting. So the question is, Keith. Wants to have, wants to buy for the town an mm -hmm. electric vehicle. Yes. Um, okay. So, do you feel that our grid currently can handle supplying him with electricity? Yes. Okay. Yes. We also, when we were talking to the police chief about police vehicles, that it is much cheaper to run also. Oh, so yeah. even if it costs more oh, initial. initial outlay, it will pay for that difference and more over the life of the vehicle. Yeah. Oh, so and even, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's good. It, it, it will vary based on the usage of this versus the police. Yeah, but we had a we had a result of the survey from South Deerfield on which they saved with electric. It was quite a bit. It was a real yeah. noticeable. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that, that was the projection we had. It's a noticeable. I think Deerfield's yeah. was, it was a hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah. Cruise. Right. Yeah. Right. That, which is what we are getting. Which is what we are getting. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, can you get a hybrid pickup? I would believe so, but I don't know if. If that qualifies. If we can still do that now that electric are available. Yeah. Right, okay. and an electric in the long run will be easy, will be less maintenance than a hybrid because a hybrid still has an ICE engine, so you're still doing oil changes, you're still doing all the maintenance you would normally have to do to an ICE engine. Uh, your savings uh, with a hybrid are primarily gas. You're not using as much gas when you're idling, and that's really important on a police vehicle because they keep their power on when they're not moving. So that's a particular savings for a police vehicle that's worth it, uh, given that there aren't any suitable, uh, what he calls a frontline vehicle available that's all electric. If there was an all electric one available, we'd be saving even more on the police cruiser. Okay, so the fact that there's something available that will work for Keith that's all electric, that saves us more because the maintenance on the actual motor is so much less than uh, the maintenance you have to do on an ICE engine. So, and you're also, you're paying for electricity and gas, which is electricity rather than gasoline. And that is much cheaper. Well, I don't think anyone would put the argument up against that, especially when you look at gas prices and yep. the way they're going. Uh, but anecdotally, 
I know a couple of um, people in the police force at Shelburne Falls, as well as in Brattleboro, Vermont. And I was at a function with both of them not long ago. And both of them were complaining about the electric vehicles that they had and the problems. So I would the police encourage, vehicles, would right? encourage I, I would encourage our uh, police chief to reach out to the people in those departments, Shelburne Falls and Brattleboro, Vermont, and find out what they're dealing with in respect to their cruisers, the, the electric vehicle cruisers. Just, right. I, well, I, I was surprised. Yeah. So, As the police liaison for the select board, I can tell you that our police chief has looked into that. And basically his report to us was that the electric, the all electric police cruisers are not there yet. They don't meet the needs of a frontline vehicle that uh, the d departments that have them and like them are using them as a kind of behind the scenes vehicle. Like Northampton used them for going out to do parking tickets and that sort of thing, right? So, right. Uh, so I, I, I want to assure you that that's been done and that the hybrid was the decision because of things like what you're talking about. That makes me feel better. Good, because I, I really it's like police meetings to make you feel better. Whether it's the grid or the EV vehicles or the police, go to choice. She knows. Okay, very good. So just uh, to double back with mine, yep. I, I, I'm still under the impression, and the reason I'm pursuing what I'm doing is that I know, or we, the town, no longer has the option to purchase a gas-powered pickup, completely gas-powered, because of the green community program and the reason. Yeah. yeah. So, right. It, like people possible. out there saying, I shouldn't pursue the electric, it's not that question anymore. Mm -hmm. We can't do that anymore. Right. No. So the understanding is that we're, we're part of this program. We have received monies already to offset costs in town and part of the part of the program is and you gotta buy an electric right. vehicle yeah, one sure. other thing that you know i'll just throw out here real quick about this that i i have mentioned to the select board is and it's going to be a situation and it's probably already been addressed in larger communities is the ideal place for electric vehicles to be charged is not while they're being trying to be used, it's while they're being parked. Mm -hmm. So whether it's like with me or the water department, there's gonna become a there's gonna come a day where the water department struck and the sure. police chief's crews are are all going to be parked at residence mm -hmm. unless they change the makeup of how it's being done now. Mm -hmm. And so how are the towns we'll change going the to, makeup of it? How are the towns going to compensate yeah, how are we going to pay key for electricity it? being used at a residence house? That's a question that I don't have an answer for. Yep. Maybe a larger communities do, but it's the same thing. You can't expect them to come into work and then be plugged in for six hours and That's not true. be able to be used. That's true. And we'll just have to discuss the various protocols. So, yeah, because it's going to be across the board for different departments. You say different departments. It's a new technology that we haven't dealt with. Yep. We'll have to set up procedures. I would. I wonder if once the electric hookup is placed in your home or anyone else's home, if there could be a separate meter Maybe. for that hookup, so that you can submit to the town. Yep. You know, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yep, I agree. But it's yet to be determined. <laughs> Uh, Heath, what the the other we dumped the yet five fifty? What's the the two thousand and eight is um, a, again what I had said a year ago. It's um, we put it on a fifteen year cycle. It is still um, something that I would say it could go another year. Um, it's not. In the dire needs, however, in the last few years, some of the um, expenses 
have started to hit like you know thousand dollars, two thousand dollars at a whack. Whereas up until the last two years, we were putting in just normal routine maintenance. Okay, so, so, so we'll have to look at the question of you know, do do we fully kind of fully fund it this year? Put something aside to figure to fund it next year. Well, we also have yeah. to look at the long range planning. What else? Of these vehicles. Mm -hmm. We don't want to push it off right. because it's <laughs> running pretty good. And then find out that he's scheduled for another two in the, in the right. one year. Well, yeah, right. that's it, it, it. All fits into the same puzzle, but it's a question of right. If if we can, but I'm not. We'll, I mean, we'll, we will have to fully fund it at some point. In yeah, it's been pushed off a year already. Right, right. Yeah, it's yep. been pushed. Right, it's been already okay. deferred. But I'm not at the same point in time. I'm not coming in here and saying I'm in dire need of it now. Okay. Okay. That's what I want to establish. Yep. Okay, that's what you said. You guys can decide that. All right. Who's going to talk about the security system? Oh, um, I can briefly talk to you about that. Um, there was, there's been ongoing things. Of course, the police station has a monitoring system, but a lot of things that happen around the highway department, and especially the transfer station, the police system just is not capable of seeing what goes on, especially dumping in the backside of the highway department. Um, mm. So the, uh, the, the, the suggestion a couple of years ago was to, um, to get a quote for it. We did that. Um, it's been updated since. And to put in camera system around the highway department and inside. Now it can be modified, it can be shrunk down and, and re, you know cut back a little bit. But at this point in time, it was like we felt to present the, the complete package to start with and then go from there. Um, it would also help alleviate, you know, should someone come and dump hazardous materials, things of that nature that end up costing a lot of money to dispose of if we you know who you know if you can prevent that from happening. Yeah. Is the area down below behind the highway department building the main problem? Or, or is it that's where the majority of you know we put you can put all the signs up you want, don't do this, don't do that, but well, when wants to do it, but when they signs, yeah. <laughs> when Sorry. they know that they can drive her out there and get away with it. Yeah. Aren't those things that, you know, if you drive in the wrong direction with a rental car, they rip your tires out? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that and word, don't tell them. That word was spread really fast. <laughs> you know, you still it still needs to be accessible around the back, especially when um, Wickle's trucking or whoever's trash hauler comes yeah. goes around there at different mm -hmm. hours of their schedule mm -hmm. to pull the box. You know, it's... Um, how often does that happen? People dropping trash. It's off. gotten better that you know that we're trying to get you know the word out that no dumping, but at the same point in time, and there can be things that show up on a weekly basis. Sometimes you go a couple weeks and there's nothing. Other times. Um, you never know when you walk out there. Yeah. You're going to see. They're mostly metal, or they drop the tires too. Tires, um, things that they can't get rid of easily. Propane tanks, yeah. things that they've got to pay yeah. to get rid of. Them. All the bad stuff. Uh, one of my comments would be: I'm not in favor of spending thirteen thousand dollars for cameras on a building that we're going to potentially. I move out of or whatever we're going to do, you know, spend 500 or spend a thousand dollars on a couple of game cameras, put one out back. Don't tell anybody you're even putting them up, put one out back and put one out front. And, you know, you can access it, add it up to your phone. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's basically the, the hardware that goes with it to run. It's where the cost comes in. The monitor this information yeah. goes to the cloud and it can be retrieved. Yep. Right. So that's the costly part. You're gonna to have to get that whether you get one or two cameras. 
So you're better to combine both stations with one on one system, system. but it's, you know, there's a big difference between thirteen thousand dollars and a thousand dollars. Yeah, but you can't get one for a thousand with the monitoring that, that comes with this package. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So the quote for thirteen and change came from who? Uh, West Western Mass Security Systems, I think, or Northeast Security Systems. <clears throat> It's the same company that did the police station. Yeah. Okay. And that's the total cost. I, 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 I think we're, I think we're thinking that the some transfer of, station will pay for some of portion of that. We have it is recycling, have recycling grant funds that it has because the ones that monitor the transfer station can be paid for. You know, a lot of those transfer stations, but. Right, they have different grant programs that they yeah. they get money for. Okay, so, you know, that's the same point in time. I understand your comment about yeah the highway building, how long it's going to be, but in reality, yeah. it could be ten years. It could be, it could be ten years, and we're just still talking about True. it. Yep, and yeah. it's also possible the system may be transferable. Yeah, yeah. it's uninstalled. Yeah. It's True, put it in someplace else. Yep. That's possible. But, yeah. It's possible we'll have a new highway department <laughs> in, in three to five years. No, no, probably not. Um, was Brian, while we're talking about that, where we were hoping, I don't know where you're at with as far as getting out information to some of the contractor companies around here that do uh, architect work. To come up with a game plan as far as feasibility study is that something that we need? yeah that's still on my list to do okay. to reach out to the firms to get a feasibility study cost. But at some point in time, if if an article is going to be written, mm -hmm. that's going to be one that be looked at by the finance committee as well. Right. How deeply involved are you when? Our favorite little bridge. On Christian Lane? On Christian Lane. See, I, can, <laughs> I can tell you that the biggest, biggest, or the, I don't know, this, the disadvantage at the time that it was narrowed from two lanes to single lane was that the posting never changed. So any vehicle that could drive over it when it was two lanes could still drive over it now. Says who? The state. The state. The state the came posting, in. The posting never changed. changed. Okay. Thank you, rating. So if you were driving your oil truck delivery truck over it beforehand, you still can. So it didn't gain any. It didn't lose any. It, it didn't any climb path. the ladder, so to speak, as far as becoming more deteriorated. Even though it has issues on the upstream side, the north side, and the reason for the narrowing down is the the piers under there are literally telephone poles, like it's very same material. They're they're wooden. Yeah. So it's all fresh air pods. Creosote treated. Mm -hmm. Piers that go down into the water and mm -hmm. sow it down into the ground. The creosote tree treated? Yes. Huh. We should get the conservation commission on oh, no. it. And it's maybe there's a zebra mussel yeah. issue. Oh, there are mussels in there. Okay. And yeah. so it, the, oh, they're, eat, they're eating the creosote. The, the, they are deteriorating at the water level. The, water the wood is becoming punky and, and no longer. But the piers on the downstream side are still. Good. So that is why it is not any lower. The rating hasn't been lowered. Lucky and gosh. in the eyes of Mass DOT, when all of the different sections of the bridge, you're talking the abutments, the superstructure, and all the other components are put together and give it a score. It's called an ASHCO rating score. Mm -hmm. It's that number needs to deteriorate to the point where it becomes eligible for funding. 
there are, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there are way, way more bridges in the state of Massachusetts that are far more serious condition structurally than Christian Lane is to the point where they're going to be replaced, replaced way before Christian Lane is. But who is watching the list? So you have this list and we're down here, mm -hmm. okay? And there's three below us. And all of a sudden, this one here, three below us, gets funded. Who's, no, who's putting the flag up the pole? Won't, that won't happen. That won't happen? No. no. And, and, the, and Mass DOT is on, that's something where we can monitor, that, that list I can be looked at at any point in time can you? to yeah. see where where ratings are. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they do the bridge inspection, you get to see what the ratings are mm -hmm. um, and the overall conditions and yeah. the scores. Um, so okay. we can definitely stay on top of that. Um, there is in the news recently, you know, Pioneer Valley has the highest concentration of structurally deficient bridges in the state of Massachusetts. Um, so um, so our, tanker years, truck, our tanker truck can get across there. No. Yep, you know, for the through the through the years, um, Waitley has done very well. We've been very proactive in getting bridges replaced to the point where, it, um, in the last thirty years, just about every every bridge except Christian Lane and Chestnut Lane are the only two bridges in town that haven't been replaced through the at no expense to the. Mm -hmm. Get the taxpayers are waiting. Okay. Uh, King Woodward staying on Christian Lane. Can you just give a quick rundown on the Culver? The Culver project. That project, we, we received a grant through. Um, uh, I'm looking at Brian. Division of Ecological Rescue. Yeah. DER. DER. There you go. DER. It was an estimate that was put together, we thought was going to be enough money to engineer it and get it ready for permitting. When engineers got in there and began to do soil analysis, uh, the soil in there is, is like a dupe underneath. Um, it became way more expensive than anyone had anticipated. Um, I'll say this much that what's there right now is a stone culvert that was put in in the probably somewhere in the 1700s. It's still not, it's not settling, it's not going anywhere, but it has the issues, especially for the fact that the beaver are in there. The water table is so much higher that it keeps washing the soil out in between the cracks in the um, stones. The stones, and we have. The failures, it collapses. The road, the road yeah. will just cave in. You patched it. Once. We've had, we've done a lot of repairs, but it. But the point I'm trying to get at is, in today's standing standards, no engineer will put a stamp on a set of plans that you just say, "Well, lay a few logs down across the mud and lay your lay your foundation on that." They won't go for that anymore. They won't. Huh? How come? I'll think you yeah, imagine that. Imagine that. So, so even though the stone culvert that was put in there has been stable since the 1700s, they want bedrock. They want they want to see um, cer certain restrictions. So, if you do pound piles in there, it, but that's right on top of the Lake Hitchcock. So you may and not. So hit. it is. It, they're number one. They're not going to hit bedrock. Yeah. Without having to pierce through the the upper yeah. aquifer into the lower aquifer, and Waitley already has regulations in regards to that. They wanted to do borings, and they wanted to go hundreds of feet deep with borings, and I told them they couldn't do that because that violates our bylaws in town. So it's it's spinning in circles at the moment, but at the same point in time, we need more funding and. We're hoping to apply for more money through the DER 
to further get this design done mm -hmm. and get it to the point where it would be a shovel ready ready project in the uh, in the event that there's funding there's infrastructure money and you, just 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 to clarify if anyone is watching this is the culvert but in front of castaways on the right between the between room five and ten and the fire yeah, station right yeah. And it's going to be particularly important because that that corner could soon be um, oh, a don't say a it. source of revenue for town. I mean, it's just we don't get much. I'll stop at that. But with a culvert that was built in the 1700s, does the historical commission <laughs> have any interest? And if so, let's move on to. Maybe CPA money because it is a star And yeah. instead of replacing it, instead of replacing it, we Preserve we build it. It did in the, my interest. It yeah. did <laughs> that CPA combination of CPA and historical commission. We may have the oldest culvert. It has a lot of environmental it's, challenges. I think no. I think the answer is no. That's a no. Okay. That's a, so. That's a no. Right. Okay. But Keith, right, the idea here is that we would have something when this all this billions of dollars of federal infrastructure money finally trickles down. Yeah. If ever then it's gonna be it's like era funds from 2000, whatever it was. You know, they they wanted shovel ready projects right away. You don't have shovel ready projects and miss out. Um yeah. The other the other one of our other ideas is that there's a there's an MVP grant program. That would also likely fund the culverts. So we're trying to do it all with grants. Um, we are going to apply to the same grant program again. I had a conversation with the someone from DER this past Friday. Um, but in the event that that we can't, um, we'd be looking to for this much. I think there was the estimate. They're, they're talking, there's two alternatives. One is a if they don't hit. They don't have bad rock, which I like won't. It's just aluminum arch culvert. They'll do, they'll come up on. with different, yeah. Yeah, so with the rest footings and. I remember how much, it, I, I don't want to guess, but it was expensive. Yeah. Like close to a million, right? By the time we're done, they'll be putting a million dollars into replacing a single culvert like that. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's a fairly main road. What's yeah. over wetlands? That's the. That's the You've issue. got the, the muscle, well, you know, potential muscles. There's all the, yeah, there's the same issues that we're going on. Right right right. There's our conservation committee again. Conservation, <laughs> historical. It's, don't get them CPA, involved. We'll never get that. We'll never get that like, There'll be a zebra mussel under there for sure. Why don't they just take care of the beavers? I think that's, that's an ongoing battle. That's, 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 that's above my pay grade. So, 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 I mean, we'll can have trapped them once down north of a million. going under a lot of Yes. Why can't, well, okay. So, which is right. why we really want to be in line for the yeah. structure grants that are going to come down the line. Sure. Or the MVP program, because that makes sense. That's yeah. a lot of light. Okay. All right. Are there any further questions um, for Keith in regards to roads, highway, buildings, culverts, trees, bridges, trees? He's covered um, about everything in town. We don't have any other committees, do we? We really don't need any other. That's okay. darn sure. Yeah, let's see what happens when I wear so many hats. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Want to talk about the fire budget? No, we thank, thank you very much, Keith. Thank, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Have a good night. Okay. All right. Well, swallow that pill. All right. Any questions? Um, any thoughts? Um, Brian? Nothing. Okay. You want to walk? Uh, Next meeting, March 1st, school. Yes. Hopefully we'll have a budget for that. <laughs> well, we, we don't have one now, so we really can deny um have a discussion around that. But again, we encourage every, anyone here who has questions regarding the school, whether it be whatever it might be, get it into Brian. We'll get the questions to them and we will expect answers. And it's a Wednesday, March 1st is a Wednesday, not a Tuesday. Right. Okay, Wednesday, March 1st, here. Here. Elementary school. Then and Franklin County. March, right, Franklin County. And we want Franklin County to go first. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the other one's good. Let's <coughs> see how it's supposed to be presented. That's right. That's a thing. Okay. There you go. Um, okay. Very good. And uh, all right. Are we done here? We want to adjourn. Then I'll then I'll stop. We'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are done.